Hello and welcome back to The Gallant Goblin. I'm Theo, and today we're here to look at the case incentive for the new Icons of the Realm set. This is from Waterdeep Dragon Heist, City of the Dead, Statues and Monuments. I'm going to open the box and let you take a look at what's inside while I give you a little background information on Waterdeep's famous cemetery, which features prominently in the Dragon Heist adventure. Let's take a look. In the shadows of the cliffs on the eastern side of Waterdeep, lies the walled-off cemetery known as the City of the Dead. When Water Davians shuffle off this mortal coil and, quote, go to the city, they are interred here. Long ago, the practice of burying the dead was largely abandoned as the cemetery reached capacity. For the past few centuries, the dead have been entombed within mausoleums. Some of the tombs are sealed with various levels of magical protections, and some are not actually tombs at all but portals to other realms. These portals link to infinite demiplanes where bodies, and who knows what else, can be stored indefinitely. During the day, the City of the Dead serves as a public park, a lovely green space with rolling hills, grand statues, and intricately designed mausoleums. Those who are able to afford it construct beautiful and mournful monuments to their dearly departed. These statues and sculptures dot the landscape and cast a haunting pale on even the loveliest of days. When the sun is low in the sky, people who need to meet in darkness for devious machinations will often find their way to the dark corners of the graveyard, in between tombs and mausoleums where the sunlight doesn't reach. There, dark deals can be made and illicit conversations conducted. When the sun sets completely, the crowds leave, and the gates close. Well, let's just say that they built a tall wall around the City of the Dead to keep things from getting out, not from getting in. For one thing, those mausoleum portals? Sometimes those bodies that get sent through end up finding their way back. There's a well-regarded novel by Rosemary Jones entitled Ed Greenwood Presents Waterdeep, City of the Dead, Greenwood describes the City of the Dead as part Highgate burial ground in London, part Mount Pleasant in Toronto, and a lot of, quote, little touches from other cemeteries around the world. The novel takes place in and around the City of the Dead and focuses on the Carver family who care for the place. In particular, Sophia Carver, a young woman who grew up wandering the haunted pathways between the grand statues of the city. When the dead start to escape the Walled Cemetery and wander the streets of Waterdeep, it's up to the only daughter of the Carver family and her companion, a young wizard from Cormier named Gustin Bone, to solve the mystery and save the city. I'll put a link to the novel in the video description below in case you're interested in learning more about the City of the Dead. Let's take a look at how the statues would look in a typical Dwarven Forge setup. This is the City Builder set from Dwarven Forge. Here we have our party of were creatures confronting a blue dragon hatchling in the city square with a couple of statues set up. So you can see how it might look on your battlefield. So that's what's in the box and a little bit of background on the City of the Dead. As far as the review goes, a couple of things I wanted to point out first. These little sarcophagi, the lids do come off. They fit pretty securely inside. So when they're together it doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily evident that they can be opened but they can each one of them uh, they're not large enough inside to put a mini into especially with a base on it um, but you know they can still open and you can show that there was something inside when it pops out to come and kill somebody uh, all four of these open up also this large one opens as well even smaller uh, opening there uh, let's also take a look at this case incentive compared to some of the prior ones. So if you watched one of my, one of my last videos, you saw this guy. This is the case incentive for the Monster Menagerie 3 set. So putting them next to each other, uh, they're quite different beasts, so to speak. And they're for different purposes. So this is for an epic encounter, perhaps your final encounter of a campaign, or at least the climax. These guys can be used for a lot of different purposes, probably. You can use them across campaigns, uh, setting pieces, statues for cities, um, not necessarily just in a graveyard, any kind of crypt you go into, uh, catacombs. Pretty common setting for a D&D &D campaign. 
the case incentive for the Storm King Thunder set was Chief Guh. Now, this really was a one-time encounter in that adventure. I don't know how many more times you're going to be able to get Chief Guh into uh, an event for your campaign. So, while these are maybe one-time use in a campaign, these are reusable. So, they may not be... These may not be quite as impressive on first glance, but at least you'll probably get a lot of use out of them. Uh, as far as the scale, if you wanted to see, here's a kind of a standard mini. Next to some of these, the statues are about the same size as a mini. Some of the larger ones take up probably a two by three section of the board. They're well made. Most of the paint jobs are pretty good. I'm not quite convinced with the, the weeping woman, the paint job on this one. I'm not sure if it's just mine, but it doesn't look quite done. I might retest this one up a little bit. But otherwise, they all look very solid and very well done. And that's about it. These are a pretty nice little set. Shouldn't see a, should see a lot of um, use on your table. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.